why, why even, why even, why, why go down a weight and then what, why go through the pain, right? Or the, I think it's just, I think it's just the love of the, you know, the sport. I mean, this is a sport that many of us get pay for professionally, not even the, the, the biggest names out there. They don't get the uh, recognition that we believe they deserve, you know? It, I think it's one of the only sports where, you know, where the competitors truly love what they do. But for me, it's just, you know, I just love doing it. I love competing against um, some of the best people that, that are around um, us locally or even around the world. So just to be um, at that level and compete with other people is, you know, rewarding enough. Uh, and that's why I do it. Ron Rob, one of my teammates, uh, he's been with Heroes since he, since he was a white belt. He's actually our first homegrown purple belt. Like we've had plenty of other purple belts, but they've come from other schools or, or wherever. His game is very basic and very traditional, and my game's a little more modern, and I like to do a lot of, I guess you could say, new techniques, or everyone likes to call them flashy, but we, we help each other out because when I do the flashy techniques, that's what a lot of people are doing in competition, that he can, he, he uses me for practice, and I use him when, when he uses his basics. So we kind of complement each other. I remember, I remember Nick coming here as, as a white belt, you know, he was, it was, it was still fresh to him, it was new to him, he came in here with his mom and, you know, signed in the forms and everything, so, uh, he, like, it caught him, for him, like, he caught on to it very quickly, and you could tell that he fell in love with it right away, and I've seen him grow so much, um, like, uh, you know, he's, he's one of those flashy kids that like to, like to do all the new up-to-date moves, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of um, I'm kind of an old school guy where I'm like so I'm really focused on fundamental basics. So I think I think kind of our two blends of our mindsets going of jujitsu is like it's good for our team because we, we kind of like cover those two bases. So we decided uh, last minute we're gonna go to the Samurai Pro down in LA at uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills. Uh, we got there a little early around a Friday and got to. Got to do some really cool things. Got to uh, train at some really, really good gyms. Um, first place we trained was at uh, Condacoma, and we trained with uh, with Bear. I'm shifting the pass this way, okay? So you guys make sure you use your feet to dictate where you want to play your game, right? So if this puts up. Very awesome, uh, awesome guy. Very nice guy, and uh, I actually learned a lot from him on on that day. Luckily for us, one of our former training partners, he uh, he just moved out to LA, SoCal area, and he invited us into his house. You know, it was a, it was a great situation for us because he had a, a really good uh, layout for us. He had a pool there. He had like a hot tub and. To cut weight, he had a, a, a sauna for us to, to cut weight, so it was, it was really convenient. So the weekend was really was really relaxed. Uh, just, uh, just finished cutting a couple pounds, about uh, three right now. We've got uh, probably five more. And then after that, it's time to relax and get ready for more. Um, my first match, and actually only match, uh, fought a tough opponent from Atos Jiu-Jitsu, and a young, young kid, you know, very talented. Uh, I, I stuck too much to one move, you know, I was really focused on trying to get a foot lock, and sometimes you can't foot lock someone, so you, you that things don't go your way, so. Messed up there, got, I got my guard passed, and he got three points right there. I was able to recover my guard and I went for a foot lock but I used it as a sweep and I was on top for the last 20 seconds of the match and I was trying to pass but I was already gassed out and tired and I wasn't able to pass his guard but it was a pretty tough match.
Um, yeah, first first fight. Uh, yeah, I was initially uh, went in there. I, I, I kind of had the mindset I wanted to throw the guy. Uh, guy was from Gracie Baja. Played a really good guard, so he jumped guard initially. I uh, played with uh, some spider guard uh, techniques. He had a, a, a good hook around my arm, uh, but it was kind of deceiving though, because it was like down to my to my wrist. And then he had a he had a, like a, a really good grip on my ankle on my pant leg. Got a couple sweeps, kept on getting back up. He threw a few sweeps, and then um, then we got into a little scramble. Uh, he was attempting for a footlock. He actually had the the uh, the outside leg over my knee, so it was kind of like he had in a reaping. I guess you would call it. It would be considered reaping, but uh, but the the ref let it go, so you know it didn't work out that way. And then and then uh, after that, I you know I, I passed his guard. He was up by a lot of points, and it was it was coming down to the wire, like submitting him like last minute, maybe 20 seconds in. Um, final the final 10 seconds, I, I kind of from side control came in over his head. Uh, grabbed an arm and tried to get like a inverted arm bar, but uh, he held out. So you know he, he won the match by points. So how do you deal with like you know you traveling so far, uh, you know and like losing? How, like how do you deal with that? Um, when you lose. You know, it helps you open up your mind and your game. Uh, you gotta kind of resort back to old, old techniques that you don't do anymore. Like, uh, I won a couple tournaments before this, and you know, my game was staying the same, just foot locks, foot locks, and sometimes that it doesn't always work. So it helps your game evolve when you lose, actually, because you have to try new things, experiment. You have to lose. You have to get beat down with the technique that you're not used to doing and that's when you you strive forward and that's what that's what really helps it, it's tough you know nobody likes losing but it, it's one of those things where you have to like, just think of it positively I know it I know uh, you know for for us competitors that have to travel it, you know we invest a lot of our time and money uh, to go to these events but at the same time you know it's on the uh, on the other Another way of looking at it is just like, you know, you're traveling there with your your, your, your teammates, your friends. Uh, I trained really hard with my, my friends, so uh, as far as as far as a loss, I know that you know, if I take a loss, I know it was in, in vain because my, my my training partners prepare me as best they can, and you know I prepare them as best I, as best I can. So if it, if I take a loss, it's just it's just one of those things. It's like you got to learn from it. it there's so much jujitsu to to accomplish, you know, it, it's not, you can't really beat yourself up over a loss, you know, even, even some of the, the big names out there, they, they have taken quite a few losses at an earlier belt, you know, purple, blue, white, it's just one of those learning processes that we have to get through, and it's just jujitsu, so. And right now, I'm, I'm working part-time only, and the rest of my time goes to jujitsu, and it's hard getting into tournaments like this, and I really want to thank my supporters, you know, we have Want vs. Need, we have Do or Die, we have Illis, you know, they, they give me gear, they, you know, they support me at the tournaments, and uh, very thankful.